everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to go through another abstract data type, and this one's called the queue. In recent videos, we went through the list ADT, which is a sequence of items, and we went through the stack ADT, which is a sequence of items with some restrictions on how you can access those items. Namely, you can only access them from the top of the list, which could be something like the beginning or the end of an array or a linked list or a vector. Now the queue is like a stack in that it's a sequence of items with some restrictions. The restrictions are of course a little bit different though. So let's go through a definition of a queue and then we'll draw some pictures. And I think the idea of a queue will hit home with you because you use queues nearly every day. All right, so definition of a queue. So a queue is a sequence of items, like I said earlier, where items are added to the back, which I'm going to put in double quotes because there are different synonyms for back that could be used here, like rear or tail of the sequence. So this is how we add items. We add them to the back and items are removed from the front of the sequence. And then same thing here, I'm putting front in double quotes because there could be some synonyms used here like beginning or head. All right, so let's draw a picture here and go through an example. So a queue is also known as a FIFO or first in, first out data type. Recall that with stacks, we said they were last in, first out, and we gave the example of a stack of plates at a buffet line, right? Whatever plate was most recently put on top of the stack of plates will be the first plate to be removed by a customer when they grab one off the top of the stack. So let's do an example also along the lines of food. And let's say you're at the grocery store and you're done doing your shopping and you're ready to check out. So let's say there's a cash register over here. It could be a self-checkout or it could be a checker. It doesn't matter. There's some place where you need to pay. And you walk up getting ready to pay, but you find that there are some people already in line in front of you. So let's say these three people are already in line. So they're clearly in line before you because they got there first. So let's say you're this blue person and you get in line at the end or the back of this line. Well, this line is really a queue, right? And you just added yourself to the end of the queue. So let's draw this then and add some labels. So here you are, you're at the back. And here's this person right here who's at the front of the queue getting his groceries checked out so he can pay and leave. If someone were to arrive, say, behind you, then they would now be at the back of the queue. So we'd have a new back. Let's say that this guy right here, I'll draw him in red. Oops. This guy right here, he just finished getting his groceries checked out. He paid and he has now removed himself from the queue, so he is gone. That means we have a new front of the queue, which is this guy right here. And we're that blue guy, and we just got a little bit closer to the front of the queue, okay? So remember, a queue is first in, first out. Anytime you've gotten into a line at the grocery store or at a retail store or whatnot, you've gotten yourself into a queue. Whoever gets there first is the first one to get serviced and the first one to get out of that queue or get out of that line. So let's go through one more example. Let's say that this front guy right here, I'll draw him in red. This guy right here, let's say he just finished getting his groceries checked. So he leaves the queue. We have a new front of the queue, which is the person in front of us. Let's say starting to slow down at the grocery store. So no one's coming into the back of the queue behind this green dude. Okay, let's say this red person right here, he gets his groceries checked out, he's done. Our new front of the queue is us, 
the blue person right here. We're so happy to be at the front of the queue. We check our groceries out, we pay, we're done. We've just been removed from the queue. Now the front of the queue is also the back of the queue because this green person right here is the only one in the queue. So let's say he's getting his groceries checked out. He's done, he removes himself from the queue. And now there's no one in the queue, which means our queue is empty. If some new person were to arrive into the queue, then they would be at both the front and the back of the queue because they're the only person in the queue. All right, so key takeaway point from this diagram is two things. One is first in, first out. Whoever gets there first is the first one service is the first one who gets to leave. And then secondly, queues are everywhere, right? You get in lines like this all the time. So just keep your eyes peeled and you might be surprised at how often you're seeing this abstract data type in action. All right, let's finish going through some important features of queues, values, operations, a common variation, and then how to implement it. And then in the next video, we will use one of our data structures to implement this queue ADT. All right, so what are some values that can be in the items in a queue? Well, it's the same as for a list or for a stack. So these could be uh, primitives like ints, chars, doubles. These could be standard types available to us by C++ or Java or whatever programming language we're using, like strings. Uh, these could also be objects or structs of custom types that we've defined. It really can be anything we can put into, into our queue. All right, next let's go through the common operations on a queue. So let's start with the two most important ones. So NQ, which is kind of tough to spell, E-N-Q-U-E-U-E, -E -E, NQ, this is adding an item to the back of the queue. Okay, so that's what we were doing when we as that blue stick figure got in line at the back of the queue. We were NQing ourselves. Next we have DQ, also tricky to spell. So DQing is removing an item from the front of the queue. So that would be the red person at the front of the cash register who just paid for their grocery items and can now leave the queue. So NQ at back, DQ at front. Another operation that you might see is peak. So remember peak from stack ADT? Peak is where you look at the item at the top of the stack, but you don't remove it. So peak for a queue is where you look at the item at the front of the queue, but you don't remove it. That's the key. You just look to see what's there. And then three more common operations you're likely to see related to queues would be is empty. You're just querying is the queue empty. Next one would be size. Maybe you want to know uh, how many elements there are, how many items there are in the queue, right? This is kind of what you do when maybe you're at the grocery store or you're at Costco, right? If there's multiple queues, multiple lines, then you query what's the size of each one. And then you choose the one with the smallest size that's shortest, right? Because that means that you're going to NQ yourself in the back of the queue and you're gonna be DQ'd from the front of the queue quicker than one of those longer lines. And then lastly, clear, this would be clearing out the queue. And in other words, it would be making it empty. So this would be like walking through all of the items in the queue and dequeuing them until there are no more items to dequeue. All right, lastly, I want to mention one common variation of a queue, which is called a priority queue. So with a priority queue, you insert items in order. Why would you do this? So the highest priority items are at the front of the queue, and thus they are going to be dequeued first. So here's an example of this. If you think about maybe an emergency room, or you think about maybe urgent care, right? Let's say you show up with a bee sting, okay? And maybe there's a, like two or three other people in front of you, that's fine. You're just kind of low priority. You get into the back of the queue. But let's say someone else shows up with a bee sting, but they're highly allergic two bee stings, then that person, as you would want, would get moved higher up in the queue and closer to the front 
because they have a higher priority than you, right? Theirs is life-threatening, yours is not. So they should be DQ'd from the queue sooner than you so that they can get that treatment faster. So that's an example of a priority queue where you don't just always NQ items at the back, you NQ items according to their priority. So this is kind of like a sorted list, right? Where you perhaps have it such that the largest values are towards the front of the queue and the smaller values are towards the back or the end of the queue. All right, and then lastly, the implementation data structure for a queue is very similar to a stack. So you could use an array where you keep track of the front and the back indexes. And this could be a circular array where if you're at the end of your array, say like a very high index value, you can just NQ an item at index zero just by wrapping around those indexes to the front. You could also use a vector and some of its common operations in order to NQ and DQ. And you could also use a linked list. So in the videos that I'm going to go through, we're going to implement a QADT using a singly linked list. You could also implement a queue using a doubly linked list, for example. But what I'm going to do in the next video is going to be an implementation of a queue using a singly linked list. So stay tuned for that. Just to wrap up and summarize what we worked on here. So a queue is an abstract data type where items are inserted in first in and they are removed in first out order. That means who's ever been in the queue or whatever's been in the queue longest is going to be the first to be removed from the queue. Just think about those lines at the grocery store or at Costco or at the movie theater or whatnot, because those are examples of queues. In fact, in some countries, like over near the UK, they say queue instead of line, like, oh, are you in this queue if they're at the grocery store? Or we would say, are you in this line? If we wanted to check to see if someone's just waiting around or if they're actually in line. All right, that's it for cues. Stay tuned for the next video implementing the QADT as a singly linked list. Thanks for watching.